let's take a look at how you can set up a classroom for Jamf Teacher. Now, just to highlight, there are automated processes of doing this, but if you're trying to just get Jamf Teacher working, to just do maybe a pilot, small scale, um, and you don't want to have to go through the whole IT, IT setup and, and integrating with Apple School Manager, etc. If you just want to see that it works so that you can do it in your own classroom, this is a process that can help you get set up. So the first thing you're going to need to do uh, in Jamf School is to initially have some users. So you're going to want to have some, some students. Now my instance already has lots of students put into it. Now the process to do it, you can add users um, auto, uh, sorry, manually by clicking on here and creating a username, etc. And, and putting all of this in. So if you've got a, just a small test group you're doing, this is probably going to be nice and simple. Um, but the second you start doing like a number of users, it's going to take you time because each one is a manual. So you can import users using a CSV. Now, Jamp School has a CSV kind of template in here that you can utilize. So you'll see here that you can download this template for you to use. In fact, if I just show you on my iPad screen, I already have one of these in place. Um, and it looks something like this, okay? So you can just choose how you put your first name, last name, what groups they're gonna be in. I'll come on to that in a second. Um, you don't necessarily need to, at this point, worry too much about emails and passwords, etc because we're just gonna focus on how to get this set up so that you can use it for your classroom. Okay, so once you've downloaded that and then uploaded this, um, import in, it will give you those users. You will then have users that you can play around with um, that have been created within the system. So this is not from Apple School Manager porting across, although that is a very good, easy way to do this. And of course you come with managed Apple IDs if you wanna do it that way as well. This is purely just for pilot uh, classes, etc. Okay, next thing we're gonna to need to do then is we're gonna create some groups, okay? So once we're in groups, we're gonna to go to a group here. I'm just gonna call this one my teachers. I'll just call it a test, just so I can see that they're, they're separate in there and add that. Now once this is added, the key thing you need to do here is edit the page and you want this to go to allow. So you want the teachers that are in this to be allowed to use Jamf Teacher, okay? Uh, so we're just going to save this and then I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to make a group for students. I'm just going to call this student test. Just add this and then an edit. I'm going to deny. So these are not going to be teachers. These are going to be students. So I need to make sure that they kept separate within that instance. Okay. So this is the setup process for that. I'm then going to go back to groups and I need to have a group, which is going to be my class test. So uh, I'll just call this demo class test again, just so I can keep these separate to other things that I've already set up. And at this point, I need to just make sure I add in the members. Okay, so we've already done this add user element. So the users should be in the system. I need to add users into this. So the first person I'm going to look for is a teacher. Now, just because this is set up um, on my system, I'm just going to look for my user account. So I'm going to be in as a teacher. And then I'm just going to add a few students into this as well. So I put these in a little bit earlier. Uh, just trying to find the names that I used. Here we go. Add. Um, and then you just continue to do that for all of your students that you need to add in. Okay, so they're now a member of this class, which has been set up that I'm going to now use with my Jamf teacher setup. Now, a couple of other things I need to do, just need to make sure that these people are assigned in those groups. So I can do this a couple of different ways. I'm just gonna jump in this way where it's got all of my classroom uh, groups here. If I just edit the details, I just need to make sure that I'm in that member of that group. So I am automatically demo class test, but I just need to make sure that it's part of a manageable group here. So again, I can just look down the bottom, find whichever group that is. You probably won't end up with quite as many as I've got on this, but again, just showing the process. And that now becomes a manageable group. 
And if I just go and find that student I added before, I can double check in here. Are they a member of that class? Uh, so demo class test. Yep, they're already into that. That's great. Now, you'll notice the last thing I need to do is assign a device here. So this student needs to have a device assigned to them, same as a teacher will have a de device assigned to them. Now, at the moment, I have only one device, so I'm just going to go through a, a process of just unassigning it to this one student here um, so that it becomes available. So if I just jump into this, at the moment, it's assigned to Daryl. I'm going to change this to my new student that I've just added, which is this one. Save those changes. And that's done. Okay, so I should now have managed classes, etc. So on my managed class list over here, I've just refreshed the page. You'll see that's automatically now shown up my demo class test. I go into it, there's my student I've added, and now I have all of those controls to be able to allow websites, deny apps, restrictions, etc. All done really, really easily. And just to show you how how really, really um, simple this is to use, if I just pop back in to edit these. If I give this device back to Daryl, oops, spell, find Daryl, there we go, and save that, you'll see that on my uh, class he will, he will disappear and then reappear and then as Daryl because he will be assigned to the class. Now he's not in that class, but he has got a device assigned to him over here. So Daryl then still has access to his devices, etc. So again, just, just to show you that this kind of happens really, really quickly and easily. So there we go, that's kind of the whole process, that's the setup. Like I said, Apple School Manager will do this automatically for you. It's really, really easy to do it by just kind of importing that stuff across from Apple School Manager into Jamf School, etc., and having that set up. But if you just want to pilot this with your class, that is a great way to do it. Let's just add one element to this uh, where we can set up our classes ourselves as long as there are users that exist within Jamf School. So the same user add process would exist, but maybe this could save a little bit of time, again, for those pilot kind of setups that you might want to do, as well as some kind of ad hoc classes that you might want to do. You'll notice on my iPad screen, I've got some of my classes underneath, which differ to the managed classes. So the managed classes have been created in Jamf School. They're the ones that we saw earlier uh, within the groups here. However, we can also have ad hoc classes. So probably quite useful to show where this element of things exists as well. In organization and settings, I have a separate space for my Jamf for school teacher settings. Here, this is where you'll need to switch this on in the first place to make sure that staff have access to Jamf for teacher. Um, and it's also where IT can kind of stipulate which things you see within. So whether you want them to apply app lock or web lock, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the one thing to highlight here is the ability to create ad hoc classes. So ad hoc classes um, is a really, really useful way to have those my classes section. So as long as that's turned on, you can do it. Now, some IT departments don't want you to do that because it can clutter up the Jamf school instance with your groups that you create. Um, but again, pilot groups, great way to kind of demonstrate getting these things set up to prove that it works so that you can then have an automated process for everybody else to do it. So again, make sure it's switched on here. That then gives you the ability to be able to do that for yourself. So I'm just going to jump back over to my groups for this side for a second um, because we're going to have a look at how you create those. So on my staff device, I'm going to go to create new group. I'm just going to call this uh, class 15, you choose your color, description, etc. click create. Now, if you've used Apple Classroom, you'll see that it works in pretty much the same way here. It's gonna ask me to add students manually. Now to do that, I tap add students, it gives me a code. I've got my student device uh, next to me here. I'm not gonna show it, but I'm just quickly typing in that code. And now that student has joined the class, so it's just gonna just say that they're um, in that class. Daryl's just popped up, done. Now Daryl's in my class. So that, that's the kind of process. So as long as Daryl has a device assigned to him, you can create ad hoc classes. So again, it's a slightly different way of doing things. Um, you 
the same process that I showed before still has to be done. Daryl still needs to have a device assigned to him to be able to be found in the system for all of that to work. But this allows the teachers to be able to kind of create their own classes, etc. That class should now exist within my uh, Jamf School instance. I uh, can't even remember which one I called it now. Uh, class 15, I think. So that copies over to this. So class 15 that's here. You'll see that it says it's an ad hoc class. It's got one student in it. It should be Daryl. Fingers crossed. There we go. Daryl's in that class. We can now add more in that other way. So again, a couple of different ways to do things. Also useful to showcase here where ad hoc classes can be turned on or turned off and equally just that whole kind of jam for teacher setup within jam school uh, where you change the things that teachers can or cannot do themselves as well there we go